Malta. Live and local with coverage you can count on. This is WNEM TV5 News at 5. Independence Day is less than a day away and the fireworks are already flying. Good evening, I'm David Custer. And I'm Carrie Sharp. Festivals are underway across mid-Michigan, bringing tours from all corners of the state, even other parts of the nation. With so many people to entertain, some communities are pulling out all the stops. But as TV5's Emily Nelson reports, putting on a spectacular show doesn't come cheap. What do you think about the fireworks here every year? Oh, it's great. Everyone in mid-Michigan is gearing up for those big, loud lights in the sky. And Bay City residents say the 4th of July fireworks show here in Winona Park is the best. People rave about Saginaw, Midland, but I don't think anything tops Bay City. I've never gone anywhere else because it's great here. Why, if you've got something good going on, why go somewhere else, right? Well, tomorrow night, Winona Park will be packed with people and the fireworks will be going off right here behind me. But what does all this cost the city? Uh, it's going to be a spectacular show for everybody to come out and watch. Doug Clark is the president of Bay City Fireworks. He's been putting on what many call the best light show in mid-Michigan for the last 15 years. And it doesn't come cheap. What do you estimate the cost is involved in all of this to putting this on? Uh, everything from nuts to bolts stuff is about $300,000. That may seem like a lot, but the dollars go towards more than just the main event. Everything from insurance to uh, the more mundane things like porta johns and chairs and tables and tents. And, uh, you know, so it just it takes a lot. There's a lot of factors that a lot of folks probably don't realize that goes into it way beyond just the fireworks. And if you think it's the city or taxpayer dollars footing the bill, think again. This event is a 100% nonprofit volunteer event. Clark says it's funded mostly through donations from the community. Longtime Bay City residents like Stephen and Nola Alvarado say it's all worth it. This show is a good bang for the buck. If you're going to come down and enjoy it, you should be willing to support it. If we can be the best at what's going around, I think it we should pay for it as a community. In Bay City, Emily Nelson, WNEM TV5. It's always a great time. Tonight's fireworks show in Bay City begins at dusk, but the grand finale is happening tomorrow night, and it'll cost $5 to see the show from Winona Park and $1 to see it from Veterans Memorial Park. A live look now at I-75 and Birch Run, where there are still plenty of drivers headed north, but traffic has eased up compared to earlier this afternoon. Our road warrior Andrew Keller is just north of there with a look at conditions right now. Andrew, that looks pretty good. Uh, it, it is very good, especially if you uh, have paid attention to yesterday or even uh, today at noon. This is a totally different scene. Many people already making their way north. Um, we are on northbound I-75. We just are, we're just north of Bridgeport heading toward Buena Vista, Saginaw area right now. And you kind of, we kind of see the, the deal. It's, it's not too bad. And of course we can throw that My Drive app up on uh, the, the My Drive uh, map. And you can see that uh, the roads, they're, they're not too bad. The further you head north, uh, the slower it gets. But around the uh, Tri-Cities area, especially in the in north of uh, Bridgeport area, this, the, the traffic's slowing, the speed limit's, um, you know, right, people are going right at the coast to speed limit, so it's not too bad of a de deal. Now, of course, this is, this is a totally different uh, scene from yesterday and even earlier today, but I'm sure if uh, people could hold out and get on the road right about now, it's, uh, it's a great scene to see because the road was definitely heavy with traffic um, earlier. For now, live on the road, northbound I-75, Andrew Keller, thank you. Like seeing that. Thank you, Drew. Now, Andrew will be keeping up on traffic conditions all evening. We will check back in with him a little bit later tonight. And let's get a check of that traffic on I-75 in Genesee County. As you can see, things are moving quite smoothly right now. Thankfully, drivers don't have to worry about the weather. Another beautiful day to kick off the holiday weekend. Here's Chief Meteorologist Brian Bachman with a first look at our forecast. Hi, Brian. Hi there, David. You said it best there. You know, we, we got the weather. You know, we timed it right for a change. Mother Nature did. We got the uh, beautiful weather, of course, kind of rolling back into town yesterday with the sunshine. That's carried well over into today. And our temperatures have responded a little bit, getting at least closer to their season. Seasonal averages, and you know, more importantly, you saw not only are the uh, road conditions looking pretty good where uh, Andrew Keller was, but also plenty of uh, pleasant weather conditions to, you know, not really exacerbate any traffic-related issues that you know could potentially be out there. First one, five sky tracker, just showing some passing clouds in parts of Lower Michigan, mostly from about Saginaw Bay southward and eastward into the Thumb, and just up to about the Mount Pleasant, Clare, and Gladwin areas as well. If you're kind of uh, north of there, up to about the Mackinac Straits, you're more or less uh, enjoying a good amount of sunshine.
time, but you see some showers trying to build over parts of the UP. That's a cold front, granted a uh, weakening one, moving its way across Lake Superior tonight. I don't anticipate it to have a huge impact on our weekend forecast, but it's going to kind of be that uh, you know potential wild card you'll have to look out for. Go into more detail about it a little bit later. Let's talk about how nice it is out there tonight. 73 in Saginaw, loads of sunshine. 75 in Bay City and pretty much to match in Midland. Flint are coming in at about uh, 60, 76 degrees, excuse me. And let's talk some fireworks. If you're heading to the Bay City, uh, show number two tonight, whether you're going there early to, uh, you know, reserve a good seat or sticking around, of course, through the show, temperatures looking comfortable enough, starting around 73 at 7 o'clock and we're falling to about 63 shortly after the show at 11 p.m. But we're not stopping there. More fireworks shows going on tonight. Flint through uh, Caseville and Claire, all seeing temperatures mostly in the mid to upper 60s with mainly clear skies, so no uh, headaches anticipated from the weather in any of those places. Frankenmuth, Houghton Lake, Harrison, your fireworks shows tonight as well. Temps in the mid 60s. Tough to do much better than that. We'll see if we can do that though this weekend coming up in your full forecast. Brian, thank you. And if you are planning on seeing the fireworks tonight, you might want to head out early. That way you can enjoy one of the many festivals going on right now, like the one in downtown Flint. And if you are going or if you're not going, you might want to think twice about letting your kids go by themselves. TV5's Ronnie Duncan reports. Once again, Flint's downtown has come alive with the Flat Lot Carnival, an opportunity for people to say Flint is back. It's nice. It's nice. They like it. They like it. They said they wanted to come and we're here. As people paid their money to come into the carnival, little did they know this was a fundraiser for the city. It helps people that are in need. It helps those that are suffering and those that don't have the opportunity to be able to help themselves. And that's what it, that's what it's there for. Now, while this looks like a day of fun, it's also the beginning of the curfew rules in downtown Flint, meaning any minor under the age of 17 who happens to be downtown without adult supervision there will be some consequences to pay. It's a great thing. They need to do as much as they can to keep down on the violence. It's almost terrifying to be here with my family and kids. So everything they're doing, I'm actually really for. Now the curfew that's in place restricts unsupervised minors during special events in the city, which starts today, July the 3rd. And it will extend all the way to Back to the Bricks, which is a special event from August 11th through the 14th. And Chief James Tolbert says, get your kids in order or else. What we really want is to enjoy them with their family. And we know that when kids are with their parents, they, they tend to behave a little bit better uh, for some reason. In Flint, Ronnie Duncan, WNEM, TV5. And don't forget, you can catch Flint's fireworks show tonight. That's going to be happening at dusk. They'll be launched from Chevy Commons, and you can see them from the downtown area. Well, with all the festivals kicking off across Mid Michigan, it's not just the fireworks that are booming. We will take a look at how local businesses are cashing in. That story tonight at 6 plus. A local park renamed in honor of a fallen hero. We'll take you to that ceremony. And police are on alert across the nation after the FBI issues a terror threat warning. We'll show you how the country's largest police force is preparing. And at local campgrounds, it's tents and RV as far, RVs as far as the eye can see. We will hear from someone who snatched up one of the last campsites.